Congratulations, you've graduated. But now, what are you going to do next? This video goes out to all the new graduates or just anyone who's planning their next career step. I was in that exact position seven years ago when I was a newly qualified radiographer. But now, I'm a radiographer who specialized in pediatric MRI. I'm going to overshare with you how I think about different factors before narrowing down to that one specialty. We will talk about money, lifestyle, personality, recognition and opportunities for growth. So by the end of this video, hopefully you can also be honest with yourself about what is the best for you, not just what everybody else or the world make you think you should do. So if you're not familiar with the world of radiography, after you graduate, you are qualified in taking x-rays and some basic CT scans. So I get a lot of questions like, hey, should I stay in x-ray for 10 years before I specialize? Or should I just jump to any opportunity to specialize in any modality? The same kind of go for medical students and nursing students. Should they do oncology, neurosurgery, orthopedic, plastic? There are just so many options. But the universities, they don't teach you how to make that decision. I'm not saying you need to make that decision in the first year of your university, but I do believe in working and living intentionally, which means if I want to do MRI, I'm going to apply for jobs where there is actually an MRI machine. Even if that means I need to travel further for work or I have to take a smaller paycheck. Hopefully that compromise is going to result in a better opportunity in the future. So in my final year of university, I was pretty sure I was going to do ultrasound. But after working full time in x-ray and CT for three years, I decided that MRI is a better option for me. So that decision is almost like choosing my own husband. If I'm going to be doing it for eight hours every day, for the rest of my working life, I better love doing it. So number one, money. I think that makes up roughly 30% of my decision. Money is not everything, because if it's everything, I would be doing ultrasound. So in general, if you do ultrasound, you get the highest hourly rate. So say I get paid $50 at my work for doing MRI, if I were in ultrasound, I would get paid roughly $65 per hour. But what I was aiming for was to make a little bit more money than x-ray, but I wasn't thinking about making like big money like doing ultrasound. I was pretty happy with that little bump of salary. And you can check out my other video about how much of a radiographer makes. But say if money is gonna make up 80% of your decision, then just do ultrasound because that's where you're gonna make the most money. For me, there are other important factors I need to think about, which brings me to number two, lifestyle. So in x-ray, you have to do night shift every month. And the same goes for ICU nurses and doctors they probably have to do night shift every three weeks or so. So once in a while, we get an ICU nurse transferred to medical imaging department because they just don't want to do night shift anymore. They want something like nine to five every day and no weekend shift, where medical imaging is perfect for them. So in MRI, you don't do night shift. Anything after hours, you'll be on call. And the other thing would be the physical work. So in ultrasound, you have to put a probe on the patient's body. I know it looks pretty easy, but if the patient is bigger, there's a layer of fat, there's a layer of muscle, and then there's your anatomy. You have to push the probe really hard in order to get the frequency across the body. So thinking about doing it day in, day out, it's gonna take a toll on my elbow and my shoulder. And that's one of the big reasons why I decided not to do ultrasound. Whereas in MRI, once you set the patient up in the scanner, you are pretty much on your computer setting up the scan for the next half an hour to two hours. So I felt like that was a job that I can do well into my 60s or even 70s. Now, number three, personality. When I was in the x-ray in city, I always felt like something was missing and I didn't really know what it was until I started working in MRI, which is the relationship with patients. So in x-ray and CT, the turnover time is really quick, so you don't really build a connection with the patients. Whereas in MRI, you see the same patient every month and you start building a relationship with them. Especially at work in pediatric, you watch a child grow and you see their journey of recovery. And I found that really meaningful and I really enjoy being there watching them progress. And I'm also somebody who's always rushing and always want to know. But ultrasound can be quite limited sometimes. You can't always see what you want to see. Especially the patient's bigger, you can't really see the abdominal structures. Is that a kidney? Is that a liver? Is that a spleen? Where is the pancreas? It's obstructed by the bowel gas. I can't deal with that. Where's an MRI? Bam, here's a picture. Pancreas, spleen, liver, kidney, all right there. I can see what I need to see. There is no confusion. Number four, recognition. 
or prestige or ego, whatever you call it. You can call me shallow, but don't call me a hypocrite. As a young female Asian immigrant living in a Western world, sometimes people can be a bit condescending to you. So being a specialized pediatric MRI radiographer, sometimes it gives me that confidence to, you know, feel like I am appreciated in this country. So there are situations where a stranger finds out that I'm a healthcare worker and they do change their attitude to be a bit nicer to me. Like it is not a huge component of my decision making, but to be honest, it is nice to be appreciated in the society. Number five, opportunity for growth. So MRI is still changing every year. I feel like I'm on a spaceship to Mars and it's only the start of the journey. In the next 10, 15 years, there's still so much gonna happen to MRI. There's so many innovations coming into the equation. It's not a job that will be replaced by AI anytime soon. And I feel like there's always more opportunity for me to learn more and more about MRI. There's cardiac imaging, there is PET MRI, there's just so much going on in the MRI world. It's never gonna be boring. So hopefully now you can also be honest with yourself about what's important to you. If money is everything, that's fine. If you want a more balanced work life, then maybe you need to think about a different option. But you don't need to rush. Just because everybody else is specializing in something, it doesn't mean you have to do something. I know a radiographer who works 10 years before specializing in ultrasound. I also know someone who did MRI for a while and decided it's not for him. Or sometimes you just don't even have to specialize in anything. The radiographer who I respect the most, he only does x-ray. But he does it so well that no one else can match his skill. Because no matter what you're doing right now, even if it's not something you want to do for the rest of your life, you still need to do it well and you still need to take pride in your work. If you want to know more about life as a radiographer, check out my other videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.